way. <laughs> Best 75 out of anyone. Is he playing hard, Scott? By himself? Yeah. Looks miserable, dude. Yes! <laughs> dude, he's cheating. Yes! Let's go, dude. Good luck, Dad. Be sweet. Hey, Death. Well, if it isn't the wild stallions. Have you come to sue me again? No, Death. Not at all. Oh, we just need to talk to you, Death. Talk to the head. And that's a clip from Bill and Ted Face the Music. I'm delighted to say we've been joined by Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves, who are in different parts of the globe. Hello, Alex. Good morning. Uh, and, and where are you speaking to us from, sir? Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, Keanu, where are you? I'm in Berlin. Okay. Well, listen, uh, so there'll be all kinds of delay, and doubtless we'll end up speaking all over each other, but we'll try and keep it as clean as possible. You're both very welcome to the program. Thank you very much indeed for your time. So Excellent Adventure was 89. Bogus Journey was 1991. This has been a very, very long time for movie three. What, what was it that took so long, guys? Um, it was really the, the writers who came to us about eight years ago with an idea and, and the energy and the desire to ha have another story to tell. And Alex and I responded to that idea and then we went to trying to get it made. Okay, so but that that's that's still a long that's still a very long time, uh, Alex. Was it so? Is it is is it the was it getting the right premise? What what was it? And was it always inevitable? Do you think there was a third movie? What? How do you see it? Uh, um, I think that it was the right premise. Keanu and I were very taken by the premise when the, the writers Chris Mathis and Ned Solomon first brought it to us. We thought it was a great way back into the characters, and we thought it was playable. But we also thought there was a lot of comic potential in the idea of of revisiting them and not pretending they're stunted children, but literally embracing their age, their families, the, the road, the experience of life that they'd had. Um, it just, it, there was no inevitability to this film being made whatsoever. <laughs> it was uh, a battle and an understandable one to a degree. That part of what Keanu and I liked about the idea was also what probably didn't make it seem um, extremely uh, bankable right out of the gate. The idea of, of literally revisiting characters all these years later, we thought knowing the guys write great stuff that it would be really entertaining and the fans would love it. But it took some convincing and ultimately it was the fans that got the film made. They, they caught when we were trying to get it done and they became very, very vocal about their desire for a third. And that's what got us over the hump in the end. And I guess we should kind of talk about, well, what is this premise? <laughs> You know, when we last saw Bill and Ted all those years ago, there was this expectation, this destiny kind of foisted upon them of uniting the world in, in music and with a song. And when we meet them these 25, 30 years later, it hasn't happened. And Bill and Ted are still trying to write that song, but they've been, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure and it's starting to kind of take its toll with their wives. Not so much the kids, our, our daughters are still supporting their dads, but it's taking a toll on Bill and Ted. And it's, you know, it's kind of facing that music. It's like the life that you've lived and the life that you're living and, and what happened and what can you do? And of course, in Bill and Ted way, the future comes and, you know, raises the stakes. And so they put even more pressure on Bill and Ted. In the, uh, in the 4K restored version of Excellent Adventure, there's a disclaimer that comes up right at the very beginning. Uh, so you get the Studio Canal thing and then the copyright slide. And then it says, quote, this film reflects historical attitudes which audiences might find outdated or offensive. Did you know that? No. Well, where, was, where is this? On the 4K restored version of Excellent Adventure. Right. It, almost as though people would, new audiences would come to the first one and go, that's, that's wrong. I mean, I, what do you make of the fact there's a disclaimer on the, on the old movie? Yeah, what do we think of disclaimers? Um, I guess, you know, it's a product that's going out into the world and I guess it's kind of reflecting some of the content and letting somebody who's watching the film know exactly that. Yeah. So they're not taken by surprise by it. Because it, it just, because it, it seemed to be watching the new movie that everyone involved with the movie has gone out to rectify, if there was any 
outdatedness to a movie made, a comedy made in 1989 that you've rectified it so that your your kids Billy and Thea they're very much at the heart of this movie the Chinese mythological character Ling Lun the legendary flautist is kind of is usually portrayed as male you've portrayed it as a, as a female character it just seems as though this is a film that's set very much now it's a 2020 film it's Bill and Ted in 2020 I mean, it's, it's, all of the films have been made in an attempt to reflect the world around them and to, and to put the, the characters into the, the world that's around. I mean, the, a lot of the comedy comes from how much Bill and Ted live in their imagination and how in some ways they're really out of time and out of step with the world around them. And then they're thrust into the world and across history. Uh, I think there was very much a desire to bring Bill and Ted into adulthood I don't think that it was, there, was, there wasn't there was uh, an attempt to make the film like politically correct or anything. Honestly, the, the only reason that Chris and Ed wrote Daughters is they tried writing them as sons and it just felt like a really lame knockoff of Bill and Ted. So that was a more from a, a character standpoint than a gender standpoint. But, uh, you know, in terms of the caveat, I, that would only refer to the, to the you know, the kind of homophobic slurs that, that we had in, in both of the first two movies, which were extremely common, but totally disparaging and not appropriate terminology back then. Um, but I, I think other than that, the, the, the first two movies are extremely wholesome. And yes. uh, I think the, the third one stays in line with that, that whole vibe. I would hardly look at the first two movies as being like radical offensive films other than that, which, um, you know, no one was happy about. And we certainly didn't intend to repeat. Yeah. And strikingly uncynical, it seems, this movie. Well, it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, the opening at the wedding scene, you know, kind of continues that kind of like, look how weird life can be. There's a certain kind of darkness to it, you know, but uh, it's definitely not a film of irony or sardonic. <laughs> Mark, who's the critic on the show, is a, is a mad theremin player. He also plays the double bass. So the, so the fact that you start, almost start the film by playing the theremin uh, means that we're, we're right there for you. And then all the jokes about bass solos that go on for 20 minutes. We're right with you on this. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, we both, both Keanu and I play bass. I, I mean, I don't play anymore. He still does. But we, we both came up playing bass. And uh, I think we've both been guilty of playing extremely long bass solos. But I just wanted to add that Keanu being Keanu uh, did learn, you know, cursorily, I, but thoroughly how to, uh, how to navigate that theremin and the bagpipes. So that's <laughs> yes. just to be stated for the, for and historical the record. I got the scale. I could do the scale and the trumpet. I did all and that. And the trumpet. <laughs> we would have expected nothing else from you, Keanu. Absolutely. And how, and the English accents, uh, uh, there's, there's one section in the film where you have uh, very kind of upper crust English accents. Was that fun? <laughs> Alex, were you doing upper crust? <laughs> I was, I was uh, sort of doing a, a kind of uh, a, someone who was born in the Lake District and then had then been educated somewhere more around the kind of Kent Maidstone region. I don't know if that came off quite well, but um, <laughs> an enormous amount of research went into uh, that. The locality. That. Spe speak speaking of which, can but I answer just, uh, your question, Simon? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was very fun. Poppycock. <laughs> <laughs> Just on your knowledge of uh, UK regions, Alex particularly, when you did a movie called Freaked, also known as Hideous Mutant Freaks, in which Keanu you know, is in as uh, Ortiz the dog boy. Now, when uh, Mark was interviewing you for Fangoria, and he was talking to you about all the hideous mutant freaks that you had lined up for the movie, you said that it was inspired by a, na a night out in Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain a bit more? Well, I mean, the, the, wherever that came from in my brain, where we're, you're sending me back 30 years, I imagine. Um, I don't remember saying that, and uh, I don't remember the night out in Leeds, but I, I think that probably will tell you a lot about both of those things. <laughs> Can new audiences join at this point, do you think, without having caught up on the first two? I think so. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard for us to say. I mean, I, I would. What do you think, Simon? Uh, I think probably need to watch one and two. I think just to get the jokes and and all the. You certainly can. You explain what you're doing, but I think you probably yeah. have a greater appreciation if you've 
if you've seen the other two. And so much of what you guys do is in the stance and in the walk. Does it, did, did it come like riding a bike, you know, like within a couple of seconds? Do you just go into it as a default way of standing and walking and speaking? Um, no. <laughs> you know, the writers were, were cool and were very uh, collaborative with us, as well as our director, Dean Pariso. So it was cool to be able to collaborate and work on the script and, and scenes and yeah, to get back in the, in the saddle, so to speak. Because we still had to figure out, you know, we didn't want to, as Alex said earlier, we didn't want to play caricatures of those guys, you know. And so it was just really kind of doing the work to find out who are they now and, and find out really the emotional pitch of where they're at, you know, because they still have that kind of like, you know, never quit, kind of just moving forward and, but life has taken its toll and there is a, a, you know, the real guys, they've got a lot of river under them, so. And when you, when you reached the end, Alex, when you wrapped finally, did you think, okay, we're done on this? Or are you, are you thinking, you know, maybe in 20 years time, we'll be doing this again? Honestly, it was really, really enjoyable. It was a hard film to make. It was a hard film to get made. And given the pandemic, it's been a hard film to release. But it was a fan-driven project that we were really grateful to do. And we had a lot of fun despite the challenges doing it. And we've been incredibly surprised and grateful by the, the response. The response in the U.S. for the release was, was really tremendous. And it was really nice to see people connect with the work, um, the work that Chris and Ed did and we did and the, the ensemble cast we had. I, I have not have a, had a second to think beyond that at all. Um, it's frankly been such a Herculean effort just to get this far. Yeah. Again, Simon, we're not answering your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, <that's... laughs> but well, if I talk, if I talk long enough, he wouldn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, I, who knows? But I mean, the fun's the film's really fun, and it's got such a great spirit. And it's, you know, it's um, in this time just to, wants to bring people together, and, and hopefully, it'll do that. Yeah, Keanu and uh, Alex, thank you very much. And Alex, if you if you fancy another night out in Leeds, just let us know. I'm sure we can arrange it for you. Thank yeah, you. it sounds like it, was, it would be scary, whatever it is. Thank you so much. <laughs>